cinnamon bear. Now we'd better hurry and see about Judy and Jimmy. You'll remember how the Cockleburg Cowboys, headed by Slim Pickens, rescued the twins, Cinnamon Bear, and the Crazy Quilt Dragon from the awful river of mud. But mud was the least of their troubles. They had no more instructions for getting their silver star back together again. That is, not until Slim Pickens showed them a most magical trick. Taking Judy's little looking glass, he placed it inside his ten-gallon hat, and magico, Queen Melissa appeared just like that and wrote them a note which said, Underneath the singing tree, another clue you're sure to see. They learned that the singing tree was somewhere in the Golden Grove, and off they trooped across the Purple Plain until... Indians! Yes, sirree! And right now our friends are running as fast as they can. They don't dare look back. Goodness knows how many are chasing them, but I must say they're certainly hooping it up. Faster! we just got to get away from them. I'm going as fast as I can, Jimmy. So am I. I, I feel like I'm getting a stitch in my stuffing. Hang on to me, my friends. We must outdistance these aborigines. Gee willikers, look ahead. Cactus, a regular forest of it. Let's run around it. Hurry. It's no use. It stretches as far as I can see. Oh, we just got to try to get through. We just got to. They're right behind us. Oh, my poor cinnamon hide. Oh, why, they've stopped. Probably proceeding to surround us and subject us to their power. <laughs> Suppose we just don't pay any attention to them. Just be, be nonchalant. I'm scared to turn around and look at them. Gee, I guess they're waiting to spring on us. I've heard that Indians admire courage. Let us turn and face them as boldly as possible. As I always say, uh, put up a united front. Right, Crazy Quilt. Come on, everybody. When I count three, we'll all turn around together. One, two, three. Oh. Oh, my goodness. Why, it's only one Indian. Bless my stuffing, so it is. How our fears magnified the number. Look, he's all made out of wood. How? How do you do? Oh, uh, you said that before. Can't you be less monotonous? We better ask him who he is. Maybe he doesn't speak English. Mm. Me speak him plenty good English. Me go college, play him football, speak him swell English. Yeah, man. Uh, what is your name, my lone aborigine? Mm. Me chief cook and bottle washer. Bless my stuffing. What an extraordinary name. When me leave college, catch him job in cigar store. What did you do? Didn't you ever hear of a cigar store, Indian? Oh. Me no like cigar store. Get tired people scratching matches on face. Get tired standing up all day. Lay down on job. Hmm. Get fired. Well, my vanishing American, why did you chase us clear across the purple plain with your hideous war hoops? Hmm. Me like beautiful overcoat. Overcoat? Oh, what do you mean? Your overcoat. Blue, green, oh, red. Oh, what? Me love Indian princes. Many happy returns. Catch him coat, go see many happy returns. Knock him cold. Oh, well, I, I'm sensible of your admiration for my lovely colors, my petrified Hiawatha. But this is not an overcoat that I wear. It is my own hide. Mm. Want them, just same. Make trade. 
You give them coat, me give you head start. Bless my stuffing, that's hardly a trade, friend Indian. I should say not, poor crazy quilt. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I could scarcely bring myself to part with my pelt. After all, a crazy quilt dragon without his outside uh, would be nothing. Mm. Gotta have him. No give, scalp him all over. Yeah, man. Oh, please, Mr. Indian, don't take crazy quilt's beautiful coat away from him. Wait, I'll give you this wonderful magic lunchbox instead. It has cookies and sandwiches and lemonade no. and... No, me wooden Indian. No eat. Mm. Oh, dear. What will we do? Mm. Must have overcoat. Me wear. Chief's open the eye. No get looking with many happy returns. Mm. Give. Say, Judy, remember how we got away from the wintergreen witch by showing her your looking glass? Try that on him. All right, Jimmy. Mr. Indian, please look at this pretty looking glass. You can see your face in it. Mm. Huh. I hardly blame you for saying mm. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't be surprised at all if you said mm mm. Pretty. Me like see face. Make trade. How much cost them? Oh, nothing. Too much. I mean, we'll give it to you if you'll just leave the crazy quill dragon alone. Yes, my naughty native. Uh, that's a fair trade. Mm. May take too many happy returns. Goodbye. 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 Oh, I, I was scared for a minute that you'd be a skin dragon, crazy quill. As a matter of fact, so was I. I, I'm very grateful to you, Judy, for saving my hide. Oh, that's all right, dear Crazy Quilt. But if you'll excuse me, I'm getting awful anxious to find the Golden Grove with a singing tree, like Melissa told us to do. You bet. And Christmas is getting closer and closer. And we've just got to get the Silver Star mended before we go back home. Well, the Golden Grove is still a long way off. And we have to get around this mess of cactus first. I wish we had the airplane which we left at the bottom of Looking Glass Valley. Well, if we did have it, it wouldn't do us any good, because it'd be too small for Crazy Quilt to get into. And anyway, it had holes in the tank where the stork poked his bill through it. And we didn't have any more soda pop to run it besides. Oh, dear. Uh, would you feel inclined toward a bit of piggyback, Crazy Quilt? I think we might make better time. Why, I'm just in the mood for piggyback. Hop on, and I'll take you on a personally conducted tour of the Purple Plain. Hooray! We'd never get here. Boy, this is sure something. It's the golden grove or I'm a cinnamon so-and-so. Couldn't be anything else. Why, these trees are every one just as gold as can be. I never saw anything like it. My goodness, I touched that one, and it felt just like a real honest-to-goodness tree. Gee, isn't it funny? They're all just about the same size and shape and everything. They're laid out like an orchard, aren't they? Stretching as far as I can see. Even the grass and the moss are a sort of greenish gold. Well, it's certainly awful pretty. But how are we going to know which one of these trees is the singing tree? They all look a lot... <laughs> oh, oh gee, what the heck? The winter green witch... Judy, the looking glass. Quick, show her the looking glass. Oh, Jimmy, I can't. I just gave it to the Indian. Oh, well, of course, I forgot. Oh, my poor stuffing. What's that? No looking glass? <laughs> it's very kind of you to tell me that you no longer have that dreadful looking glass with you. Oh, dear. That was the only thing that bothered me. Now, my pretties, it's Wintergreen's turn. <laughs> oh, why do you have to disturb us? We promised to leave the island of Obi, and we did. We we haven't done anything to hurt you. Oh, you haven't, eh? Well, it happens that you've caused me a great deal of trouble. A great deal too much trouble indeed. Wh wh what did we do? Do? I'll tell you what you did. Didn't you go to see Melissa? Sure we did. And you had the colossal impudence to tell her about meeting me. And what does she do? Just banishes me from the island of Obi. That's all. Oh, I remember Melissa's remark about your practicing unlicensed magic. But surely you realize that you were breaking the law and should be punished. Oh, indeed. And who is Melissa to make laws for Wintergreen the Witch, that empty-headed little minx, before she became ruler of Mabyland? I was the ruler of the island of Obi, and now she takes away my magic forest. All my fine captives gone. 
Just turns me out of my home, that's all. Oh, goody. I bet Fifo the gentle giant got out of your magic forest. Ah, yes, he did. And it's all due to you. Melissa just this minute pronounced judgment on me. And magic called me off the island. Ah, uh, but I'll fool her. I'm a better magic maker than she is anyway. You'll see. Well, well what are you going to, to do? You'll see, I said. <laughs> I'll make Melissa sorry that she ever commanded me to leave the island of Obi, never to return. I can't understand why Melissa let such a dangerous creature run loose in Mabyland. I'm going to make life pretty miserable for Melissa and the people of Mabyland, and I think I'll begin with you. With us? You mean, cruel, ugly old witch, you just better not. <laughs> what can you do to stop me now? First of all, give me your silver star. But it's all broken. Broken in a dozen pieces. What do you want with a broken star? <laughs> I'll make a dozen stars out of it. Hand it over. I will not, you old buzzer. Ah, I said hand it over. Oh, gee willikers. Here it is. Now, please, will you let us go? <laughs> no, my pretties. You're not going to have the chance to interfere with me again, no, indeed. Oh, come now. None of us has any intention of interfering with you, my uh, good woman. Don't call me a good woman. Um, a good witch, then. Don't call me good. I'm wicked, I am. I'm Wintergreen the witch, and you dare to call me good. Well, well I'm sure I didn't know I... Well, you talk too much, crazy quilt dragon. But you won't much longer. Oh, dear. I'm so scared, Jimmy. Oh, don't be scared. Judy. Yes, maybe she's joking. <laughs> Somehow, I don't just think she is. Oh, dear. I wish Melissa could see this mean old witch trying to make trouble for us again. Melissa! <laughs> Melissa can't save you now. Oh, I bet she could if she knew you were making magic when she told you not to. Yeah, perhaps if she knew it. But she doesn't know it. And I'm going to make certain this time you won't do any more talking. I'm going to change you all into... I into what? I'm going to change you into bullfrogs. Bullfrogs? And you'll be able to do is croak. That's all. Croak. <laughs> and the sooner you croak, my pretties, the better I like it. <laughs> My, that wicked wintergreen witch is back again. I thought we'd seen the last of her, but that's the way it is with witches. They pop up when you least expect them. I certainly hope something happens to save our friends, but just between you and me, I can't imagine what it will be. Mm -hmm. 